friends, wizards, witches, and muggles. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well. Today's video is a highly requested and overdue video. That's right, I finally got round to doing my updated bookshelf tour, though I should probably call it my Harry Potter bookshelves now, or Harry Potter shelves of dreams because 90% of the things on my shelf are Wizarding World related. They're not all books, there is a lot of my main collectibles on there and we're going to go through every single thing and talk about it, where it's from and etc etc etc. So if you're brand new to my channel, hello, welcome, don't forget you can click the subscribe button if you'd like to become part of our weird magical online family but let's get on with it because boy do I have a lot of things to show you. <laughs> Let's get my bookcase tour started. So this is on the top left of my bookcase and this is the kind of organized chaos section. It's where most of my Pop Funkos live. I'm not an avid collector of these, but I did end up having a few of them, the ones that I really liked. Anyway, I'm gonna start on the left. I have a few little vials. One is a Veritas Serum, Truth Serum, three drops only. That's from a Govstone Alley box and it's one of my favorite things. I love it a lot. And the smaller vial, which is just behind that little broom. That is actually a vial filled with film making snow from the Warner Brothers Studio Tour. They kindly sent me some in a press sample. So that's one of my like prized possessions because that's the snow that they used on set, which is so awesome. Behind that, I have a room spray, which actually smells like rhubarb and custard. It's not Harry Potter related. It's actually Alice in Wonderland, but the label definitely screamed potions. So it ended up on here. Uh, behind there, I have a glass bottle and a few other random bottles one holds a perfume. So let's talk about the Funkos from left to right. I've got Harry Potter in his Hogwarts uniform. Behind him you can just about see Newt Scamander and then next to Newt at the back is also Luna Lovegood in her lion headdress. She's one of my favourite characters. I had to get this Funko. In the middle of course is the Niffler. I love the Niffler so much and he's sitting on a Newt Scamander briefcase. This one is like a little toy and it opens and the little Niffler hands come out and makes a little niffler noise, it's very cute. And next to him, we have got Ronald Weasley in his Yule Ball outfit, which is so adorable. I've also got a few other random bottles. The one at the front, I was gonna make a love potion DIY. I think I still will do that, but this is where the bottle lives for now. Behind there is a bottle of Mermaid Tears, which was made by a viewer, which I loved so much. And I had to put it on the shelf because it was so beautiful. Even the, like the wax dripping down, it's so cool. And then behind there is a message in a bottle. There's nothing inside it really, it's just there for decoration. So let's talk about the things at the back. I have got a replica exercise book from Mina Lima and it's blank. I don't want to use it because A, they're expensive, B, it's pretty and I'm a bit weird like that. In front of that there are postcards, again by Mina Lima. It is a set and it's the Hogwarts series. I have a Quibbler notebook. It doesn't have any of the pages inside but I do have one of those now which I will get to show you. And below there, I don't, you can just about see it. There is a frame of the fat lady, which I did in a DIY. And I'm not sure if I've mentioned what's behind Ron. That is a chess piece from Wizard's Chess. Moving on over, we are starting to get to some of my collectibles. So I'm gonna start from the left. So many of you guys ask where I get my time turner from. This is the exact time turner that I wear in all of my videos. It's one of the Noble Collection pieces and I do take it out to wear, but it always goes back on display. So that's the one I wear in all my videos. And the one in the middle is the Slytherin Locket, which is beautiful. I don't wear that one because A, it's quite big, B, I'm not a Slytherin. <laughs> um, and and the one on the right hand side is the golden egg from the Goblet of Fire and it does actually open but I don't wear this and I'll tell you why the first time that I wore this because it was a gift to me the first time I wore it the egg actually came unscrewed from the chain so it doesn't seem that wearable it's definitely more of a display piece I think so those are all of my beautiful 
collectible necklaces from the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Next up we have one of my favourite sections of my bookcase and it's because it's so vibrant, it's very honey dukes and Luna based, so let's have a little discussion of what is on here. So on the far left we have got a ceramic chocolate frog trinket dish, so this is where this lives and there's nothing inside it, so that's where that lives because I didn't want to damage it at all and it definitely went with the things on this part of the shelf. So on the other side, on the far right, we have a physical actual cardboard chocolate frog, it still has the chocolate in it, am I going to eat it? No, <laughs> it still has the chocolate frog card in there too. Bang in the middle we have got Luna Lovegood, she is a rock candy figure and oh my gosh she's beautiful, I got her in a special edition of the Wizarding, World of Wizardry Geek Gear boxes and I'm obsessed, I'm trying to control myself and not buy loads more. So in front of her we have her Spectra Specs and they're so lovely, you can still buy these online, they're made out of plastic so they're not they're not the paper ones and they're really cool, they're one of my favourite props on these shelves. So at the back I've got another chocolate frog which you can see behind Luna, I have some fizzing Wisbees, all of these are still filled with the candy because I'm using them for props, I I'm never going to eat them. And then to the right of the chocolate frog you've got some Bertie Bots Every Flavour Beans and then there's some Peppermint Toads behind those. I've also got some Sherbet Lemons which are Dumbledore's favourites in that pink Honeydukes tin and behind the tin there is a box of fudge flies and I have tried all of these by the way, they're delicious and on top of the Honeydukes tin there's a chocolate frog eraser which you can just about see. So yeah I love this section, it's vibrant and it fills me with so much joy so yes this is my favourite part. Next up we have simply got the Horcrux ring, it has a whole cube to itself, it's one of my favourite collectibles, the stone actually has the Deathly Hallows in it, so this is kind of like Horcrux but it's also a hallow which I quite like, and yeah I love the casing for this, I think it's really pretty, it's definitely one of the newest collectibles on my shelves I think, and yeah there's not much more to say about it, I like to keep things in their little display cases, I very rarely get them out unless they're for Instagram photographs, so yeah, <laughs> this is my Horcrux ring and I love it a lot. Okay, moving over to my really messy section, I, I need to do something with this, there's a lot of random going on and it doesn't please me. So at the front we have got my Golden Snitch, it's a plastic one, the wings flap, I got it from the studio tour in London. Behind there is a cauldron mug and inside I have a lot of random wax seals that I've collected or made myself with a lot of random badges in there as well that are probably Harry Potter themed. Uh, to the left I have got a butterbeer ice cream cup which has Hedwig in there, it's a little plushie which is made by my friend Amelia and she's very talented, so yeah that's where little Hedwig sits. Uh, behind Hedwig is actually my Dementor Pop Funko, I didn't want to put him with the rest of the Funkos because that's like a happy shelf so he kind of just sits over here for now. On the right we've got another butterbeer mug, this one isn't for ice cream though, it's for the actual drink, it's filled with some random sweets that I have, so I've got some frutella and some jelly beans that are just there in case I need a pick me up, and inside of there, I don't know why it's there, but I have a Ministry of Magic visitor card which actually came with the magazines on the left, so the magazines on the left were made by Muggle Magic DIY, he just sent them to me and it was so kind and I love them. They're full magazines, so there's the Weasley's Wizards Weezy's product catalogue, it is so cool, it has all the products and it's really vibrant and it, it's just awesome. And then we've got the Quibbler magazine which is by far my favourite one and it's got the pages inside, I've been desperate to get something like this. I I know it's fan made but it, it still feels really really awesome and then I have a Mudblood magazine as well so that also has the inner pages to it as well. I haven't found a good place to display these yet, I don't want them where they are at the moment because they're, they're sagging a little bit and I don't want them damaged but that's the only place that I've found to put them so far. And behind the magical DIY magazines I have got my very own signed Gary Oldman print. He is purely there because I haven't 
come up with an idea of what to do with him. I think I'm gonna frame him and put him in my future office uh, when I move out. So it, they're just there because I needed somewhere to put them. At the very back, we have got a Warner Brothers Studio Tour London clapperboard. I even put my name on it because I felt really cool. And in front of there is actually something that came from a Loot Crate box. It is the Ariana Dumbledore um, it's like a little jewellery box thing, there's nothing inside of it, but it was one of my favourite things that they came up with. That That's the chaotic part of the bookshelf, let's move on. Next up I have a few more collectibles, these are in their very own glass cases, I do apologise for the light reflecting on them. So at the front I have got my, this is actually one of the first ever Harry Potter collectibles that I bought, so this one's very special to me, it's also very dusty. <laughs> so this is my Hogwarts house uh, badge collection. They're pins and they're enameled. They are beautiful. You may have seen these in some of my older videos when I used to do like makeup tutorials for the Hogwarts houses. I wore these. Um, so yeah, they're absolutely stunning. They come in a wooden box with a glass top and behind those I've got my very own Gringotts coin collection from Noble Collection and this is just where they live. Uh, <laughs> I, I like them. So next we have got some Harry Potter books. These are the newest ones that I have. They're a brand new cover and I bought these because I have my really old editions but I don't want to physically touch or read them anymore. I know that sounds really weird but they're very old now. So I bought myself a brand new set of the Harry Potter books that I could read and I wouldn't mind touching. So these are those. The covers are so pretty. I love them so much. I'm currently on my reread. I'm actually reading, well, I'm actually listening to the audiobook of the Chamber of Secrets, but I kind of dip into reading the physical one and listening to the audiobook. It can get a little bit confusing. On top of those books, I have a wand book, which is the one from Looch Crate. It doesn't fit anywhere. I don't know if I'm going to keep it, but it's there because I want to read it and then make a decision of what I'm going to do with it. I've also got my really cool bookmark. I can't remember which subscription box this came from, but I'd always wanted one of these. It's the Quidditch boots and a broom and that's my main favourite bookmark that I use. Next to that we have got probably one of my coolest books ever because it's a pop-up book. <laughs> I got this from Amazon and it's just very cool. I don't get it out that often but it's, it's really lovely to have. Next up, I have then got a notebook. It's a Newt Scamander notebook. I've never written in it. It's one of those notebooks that's too pretty to write in. Does anyone else do that? Let me know. <laughs> so he lives there. And then I've got the Harry Potter and the Cursed Child parts one and two book, which I did read in about three hours and have never read it since. And I'm probably not going to because... I don't know. I, I, I liked it. I did enjoy reading it. I, I'm not lying there, but it wasn't the best. So let's move on to the next square. Next up is one of probably my most expensive collectibles. This is the Ravenclaw Lost Diadem and it lives in its box. There is a mark on the cardboard at the front and I don't seem to be able to get it off, which I'm a bit gutted about, but hey, it's what it is. So this is the box that it lives in and I've also got Tom Riddle's diary back there, which you can just about see. So I just keep that in there because I feel like it's an extra space to put something and I also have Harry Potter's glasses tucked away behind the Ravenclaw Lost Diadem. So there are three things there that I enjoy and this is like bang in the middle of my bookcase so it's like it has pride of place and I enjoy it very much. Seriously it is so stunning and I could stare at it for ages. It's that beautiful. Ah. Uh, this is where it started. These are my original Harry Potter books. So the first three are in paperback, but I, I love them so much, especially the Philosopher's Stone. It's been read and read and read. And the pages are very, very aged now. They're practically coffee stained. They smell actually really nice because they smell like old books. So uh, something that you might notice from if you watched my last bookshelf tour, my Half-Blood Prince copy was the adult version and it was black and they didn't all match. I have resolved that. I found myself a copy of the Half-Blood Prince that matched all of these and I'm so stoked about it. So they all match and they're all a little happy family and oh, I just love them so much. Oh, 
yeah, I, I will be keeping these forever. So on the left, there are a few little books. Um, there is, there's actually a postcard, a card that someone sent me of Hogwarts and it's absolutely beautiful, kind of wedged in there because I didn't want to get rid of it. So I've got Quidditch Through the Ages by J.K. Rowling. I have my first ever Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them book. I also have The Tales of Beedle the Bard. That's a hardback cover. And on the very, very end, I have, History of Magic, oh I can't remember what they're called, they're the memos, the, the something memos where you can make your own little uh, Ministry of Magic paper aeroplanes. They are very fun, uh, they live there, so yeah, let's move on. Next is another one of my prized possessions, this is the Noble Collection Huffle Puff Cup. You can't drink from it, but it is very, very pretty, and I, I, it's so pretty that it deserved its own section of my shelves. I don't know how long that's gonna last, but for now, I love it so much. I am a big fan of Hufflepuff. If I wasn't a Gryffindor, I would be Hufflepuff. I'm actually a Griffin Puff, so take that as what you will. So yeah, love this. I think it's absolutely beautiful, and I couldn't be happier with it. It looks like it's come out of the films. I've grabbed through my screen and stolen the Horcrux Hufflepuff cup. So yeah, that is that. Moving on to some more books. I'm gonna start from left to right. So the first one is Harry Potter. Potter, a History of Magic. This book is absolutely beautiful and what's interesting is it isn't just Harry Potter. It, it delves into like, well, as the title suggests, a history of magic and it's very interesting and it's a beautiful book and I haven't had a chance to go to the exhibition so I thought that I would have this as the next best thing. Next to that I've got the illustrated version of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban and you may be wondering why do I not have the Philosopher's Stone and the Chamber of Secrets in an illustrated edition but hey I do I just have the really expensive deluxe versions they don't fit on my bookshelves but if you go and watch my Harry Potter collection you will see them in there or at least one of them so yep that is why I only have one of the standard illustrated ones Next to that I have got The Magpie and the Wardrobe. This is a book that my mum bought me ages ago but I thought it looked magical so it belongs on this shelf. Next is a very special book. This is a replica of the essential Defense Against the Dark Arts. Uh, this was made by Alarm18. It's part of the collection that he cannot sell anymore because his replicas were so good that uh, he got told to stop making and selling them. But I am very lucky that I actually have two pieces of his work and this is one of them. It's, a, it's about 900 pages or something ridiculous and they're not replica pages, they're all they're all different. It's really, really cool and it's definitely one of my favourite books and it's special for that reason. So, next I have got another Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. This is the updated version and the cover's different, it's bigger. They released these after the film came out, I believe, so I wanted one of those. <laughs> next I have got a, a new addition to my bookshelf actually. I haven't read it yet. It's called Craft by Gabriella Hurstick and it's a modern guide to witches, I think. <laughs> and it's just really pretty and I'm very much into that kind of thing. So that's why it's on this bookshelf. Uh, next is a book that was actually recommended to me by my boyfriend Pete. It's called The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss, I believe is his name is. And I, I tried reading this and I have this because Pete said if I loved Harry Potter and the kind of mystical fantasy world then I'd love this but I will be honest I found it really difficult to read to the point I did not get very far with it but it's here because I do want to read it. <laughs> I then have a copy of Sherlock. This is the essential Arthur Conan Doyle adventures book volume one. Uh, I love Sherlock. It's not Harry Potter but it's, it's a great book. So next up I then have got a notebook which was given given to me by a magical friend slash viewer called Foxcentric and it's 
a book of spells. It's just a notebook, but it's very, very pretty and magical looking. It even has the Deathly Hallows down the spine, which I won't lie, I've only just noticed. Um, but yeah, it's very pretty, so it definitely belonged on here because it looked magical. And the last book is something that my brother bought for me. You can't actually see the name of it. I think it's called Wikipedia, not as in Wikipedia. It's like Wicca. Pedia, so like the witch and it's the modern day white witch's guide again haven't delved too far in this book but it's a magical book and it belongs on the bookshelf of joy a lot of you guys will recognize this i have spoken about it so much on my channel this is the second replica book by alarm 18 which i own and it's advanced potion making it's a full book Again, he got told not to sell these because they were so good. I'm pretty sure that I heard that Mina Lima thought that they were one of theirs and they realised it wasn't and they were being made, so he got told not to. But this is probably one of my favourite things on my bookshelves. It's absolutely beautiful to the point I bought it. It's very own book stand. And yeah, so it's absolutely beautiful and I'm pretty sure that he's now released a digital version of all the inside information so I will try and leave a link down below for that if you're interested. Let's move on. Moving on to some of my favourite and bigger books. These are these are just wonderful. They're so enjoyable to look at and to read. So starting from the left, I have got Harry Potter page to screen. This book is so heavy and it's because it is just filled with so much information. You guys need to read this book if you've never seen it and it's just one of my most beautiful books and uh, I haven't even got through it all yet. It's so, so big. Uh, but yeah, definitely check that out. I think I paid about £50 for that one. So it's not the cheapest for a book, but if you're mad about Harry Potter, it's definitely worth buying. I then got Harry Potter Magical Places from the films. And you can probably guess what this is about. It's about all the magical places from the films. And it's about all the magical locations that they used to film because the film wasn't just filmed in one particular place or location and it's just really interesting these books all on this little section are my favorite so I've then got Harry Potter the creature vault this discusses all of the magical creatures and the beasts in depth it has pictures about them really in-depth kind of information and it's just very cool I love it I love the magical creatures I would love to study care of magical creatures uh, I've then got now you're gonna find this a bit weird that I have two copies of this but I will explain why so the brown books are the exact same book and it's the case of beasts explore the film wizardry of fantastic beasts now I have two because I pre-ordered it before it came out and it arrived I then got invited to Mina Lima the graphic designers of Harry Potter um, and I went to an event and I met them they are so wonderful and I got a book from there because they were offering to sign them so the one one of them I don't touch because it's signed and I want to keep it in immaculate condition and one I do read and take all the inserts out of so that's why I have two because <laughs> one's for pleasure and one is for never ever touching next up I have got the artifact vault and this talks about all of the artifacts, so like the Time Turner, the Hufflepuff Cup, the Ravenclaw Diadem, it talks about everything within Harry Potter in depth. It is so good, it is one of my favourites. And the next book, if you're going to buy one of these books in this section, I definitely recommend buying Harry Potter Film Wizardry because it's so interactive, it has so many pullouts and it filled me with so much joy when I bought it. So definitely recommend this one. It's really, really, really good. It's probably one of my favorites. So next I've then got the Character Vault. Again, you probably know what this is about. This talks about the characters in depth, their costume design, their wands. It's just brilliant. I have then got a book called Inside the Magic, The Making of Fantastic Beasts. And this just discusses how they made Fantastic Beasts and more information about that. It's really, really good. I love it. Uh, the one after that is called The Art of the Film, Fantastic Beasts. Uh, as an art lover myself, this is gorgeous. Uh, it's just stunning. Again, if you love Fantastic Beasts, buy this book. It is so beautiful. It honestly took my breath away the first time I saw it. 
I've then got JK Rowling's Wizarding World Movie Magic and I think this is volume one. This has a lot of interactive pull out things again so I definitely recommend these. They are very very fun to read and great pull outs for Instagram flat lays. <laughs> and the book at the end you will recognise as the Fantastic Beasts original screenplay. I also have two copies of this. This book in particular is the signed version by Mina Lima, the graphic designers. They designed the cover of this book and literally everything within Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts. My origin, my normal one that's not signed, I have lent to my boyfriend Pete, so I don't have that at the moment, but it wouldn't fit on here anyway. So there you go. Those are my really good favourite books. Let's move on. Next up, we have got what is the majority of my wand collection. This isn't all of them, but it is where most of them live. So I'm going to go from the very back and move all the way forward. So I've got the Elder Wand, which belonged to Dumbledore, and then we have got Hermione's Wand, Ron Weasley's Wand, Newt Scamander's Wand, Queenie's Wand from Fantastic Beasts, uh, Serafina Pickery's Wand from Fantastic Beasts, they've then got Harry Potter's Wand, all of those are Noble Collection slash Wonder by the Studio Tour Wands, the official ones. And the two at the front are not official, so we've got Victor Crumb's Wand, which I got from a Gobstone Alley box, and we have Ronald Weasley's first wand which got broken and then fixed by Molly Weasley but I just love it so much it had to go on here. So this is how I display my wands. Uh, I know wands can be quite difficult to display but this is how I decided to display mine. I thought I would be a little bit creative with it. I don't know what I'm going to do when I get even more but we shall see. So yeah, this is most of my ones, and let's move on. Next up, we have got more books. Now, I'm not going to lie, most of these are not magic or Harry Potter related, but there are some magical things thrown in there, so I'm going to start from the left. I have got the Gryffindor crest plaque. I use this as a bookend for now because I want to put it up in my future house. I currently have nowhere that I really want to put it. So that lives there and acts as a bookend. I've then got a Gryffindor journal, which I have not written in because it's too pretty to write in. I know Know. And then I've got a book called How to Be a Woman by Caitlin Moran, a book called Fangirl, and then I have a book on a thousand tattoos, which is wonderful. I really love the art of tattoos and I'm very much into art things. Uh, this book's really cool. Uh, definitely recommend it if you're into that kind of thing. I've then got a book called The Miracle Morning. This book basically shows you and tells you and teaches you how to make the most of your morning so that you can have the most productive and best life possible. It's basically a self-help book. <laughs> I've then got The Christmasaurus by Tom Fletcher. A book called The Makeup Artist Handbook, which is very good if you're into doing makeup things, which I am slash want to learn more of. I've got a book called Listography, Your Life in Lists. I haven't really used this much, but I'm very much a list person. I then got some colouring books. The first one is Enchanted Forest. I then have Fantastic Beasts, Magical Characters and Places colouring book. I then got a Harry Potter colouring book. I've then got a Warner Brothers Studio Tour London, The Making of Harry Potter, the official guide. I must have about three three or four of these right now <laughs> and the last two are books that I bought for well when I grew up when I was really into art I really like burlesque this one is about poster design the art of teas and then I have the great American pinup which was a Christmas present but it, I wanted it because it was it's just really cool to look at it's a very nice coffee table book so those are all of those books let's move on to the next shelf below from those books i've then got another non-magical shelf this just holds some photographs of me and my best friend some of which we took in egypt together i also have my kids choice award which i won from nickelodeon in 2016 and I also have a little plushy goat because at my favourite petting farm I have a goat there called Simon. I don't own him but he's my favourite goat so I bought a little plushie and behind I also have my Blue Peter badge. Moving along, I have a Honey Duke ceramic mug. This is from the Warner Brothers Studio Tour and it's on its own because I thought it was really pretty. I sometimes fill it with sweets, but it is currently empty. But yeah, I thought it was really cute, so it has its own little square. Moving on over, we have got the remainder of my wand collection. So starting at the front, I have got Luna Lovegood's wand. And behind that I have Snape's wand, those are both the official ones from the studio tour. And then behind that I have got my very own wand, which I got from Universal in the Wizarding World. I got chosen by Ollivanders and it was the best moment ever. 
And then behind there, I have got my Quidditch set. I got this from Amazon. They're fairly cheap. I think about £15. So I keep that there on display. I, one thing about that, I do wish that the snitch would come out, but it doesn't. Sadly, it's glued on. And on there, I just balance my magnifying glass, which I actually got from HomeSense. I bought it because it looked like something that I would find on Dumbledore's desk. So yeah, that's where that lives. We have then come along to some more of my books that I'm displaying. I'm going to go from left to right. The first one is a book called The Great Big Glorious Book for Girls. My mum bought this when I was a really young teenager, so it's kind of just been with me for a long time. The one next to that with the blank kind of bind, that is actually a really super old edition of The Christmas Carol and it's been in my family for quite a long time. I believe it used to be my nan's as a child but I need to double check on that. I then got a book called Girl Boss because I, I am a girl boss. <laughs> I am my own boss. I then got a dream journal which I haven't actually used yet but I do have plans on using that. I'm really, really interested in dreams which you're about to see because I then have the complete book of dreams. It's basically a dream dictionary. So for example, if you dream about, I don't know, a fox, you can then search what that means in the book which I think is really cool. The next book is then Dreams and Destiny. It's pretty much a more in-depth version of the previous book. So they're both dream dictionaries, if you like. I've then got The Goddess Guide, which is another book that my mum's bought me. It's really, really pretty, which is why I have it on my shelves. I've then got a new addition to my shelves, and this is called Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. I was recommended this when I watched, um, I think it was... Oh, I don't know which YouTuber it was, but it was definitely recommended, and it's a really interesting read. Um, it's not about actual magic. <laughs> um, next, we have got some of my secret books. How the Secret Changed My Life. If you've never heard of the Law of Attraction, definitely go and look into it and see what it's about, because I live my life via the Law of Attraction. That's what I believe in. I believe in, like, the universe and stuff. I guess it's kind of a little bit pagan. So yeah, and then I've got another one called Hero, which is The Secret again. Um, I also have another secret book, we'll, we'll come to that. So I've got the little book of, <laughs> I can never pronounce this, the little book of Heige? I, I don't know. That's um, just a little book of kindness, basically, and how to live your best life. I then got a crystal Bible, because I used to really be into crystals and collecting them, and the different kind of qualities that they have and that kind of thing and the last book is The Secret Daily Teachings by Rhonda Byrne, Byrne. <laughs> um, and that's basically the law of attraction and you have a page to read every single day so as you can see I'm very much into the secret and the law of attraction and the universe and this is where I keep those books I actually have two more I believe of the secret but I've lent one to my mum and one to my best friend Next up, I've then got another ceramic piece. This is Dolores Umbridge Kitten Cup from the studio tour. I cannot find these anywhere anymore. It must have been a limited edition or something. I just can't find them online or on eBay anywhere. But if you do find one of these, grab one. They're so beautiful. Uh, yeah, it's one of my favorite ceramic things because it's pink and it has kittens on, but it's also from the Wizarding World. Below the kitten cup, I've then got a copper basket, which is from Home Fence, and this holds quite a few random things. From the left-hand side, I've got two copies of the Empire magazine, and these magazines have a video player in the front. They are rare, you cannot get these anymore, and I think they're going for about 50 plus pound each on eBay. But yeah, they were released around the time of Fantastic Beasts when it was first launched. So I have two of those. I actually have three, but I gave one away. But I'm very lucky to have two copies of these. I love them very much. I've then got some magazines which were released around the time of Fantastic Beasts. So we have Sci-Fi Now and Time Magazine. I've then got a big box that looks like a book. There's nothing inside there, but it's extra storage. I've then got a scrapbook, which is just a personal scrapbook. And then I've got some more magazines in between there. I've got some prints. Um, yeah, it's just kind of where I keep miscellaneous things, but most of them are magical. I've also got some 
New Salem postcards and they are designed by Mina Lima. I got them from the studio tour, but yeah, and a brown bag filled with bits that I'm going to be putting into a scrapbook. Next up, I have then got my wooden chest, which is the home to all of my magical pins, all of my enamel pins. They all live inside there so that I get to keep them all in one place. In front of that is my crystal goblet from the cave, the one that Dumbledore drinks from to get the Horcrux, and it's absolutely beautiful, and those just live on a piece of tree. Uh, it's a bit random, but I thought it was pretty, and yeah, so that's that little section. I've then got a space which has some storage boxes. A lot of them are filled with crap, but I will show you inside one of them because I keep a lot of magical knickknacks that I use for my Instagrams in one of them. So I will go ahead and show you right now what's inside. As you can see, there is a lot of random memorabilia in here from the night bus ticket to platform nine and three quarters tickets. Lots and lots of things. I may do a video in the future showing you all of the goodies in here because some of the things are really, really awesome. Next, I've got this little gas lantern. I say little, it's not that small. This isn't actually gas powered either, it's LEDs. I got this from the London studio tour in a press packet. I don't think you can buy this. But yeah, it reminds me of the ones that Hagrid would carry. So it just lives down here. And I think it's really, really cute. And it's definitely got magical vibes to it. I guess that brings us to my last section of the bookshelves. This isn't particularly magical. There is a magical candle at the front, um, which is peppermint toads that came from the Gobstone Alley subscription boxes. There's a unicorn at the back, but mainly I keep candles here and little bits and bobs and a room spray. There's nothing too exciting here, but yeah, so that's it. And that's it. That is the end of my Harry Potter bookshelf tour. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you do have any questions about anything you saw, leave a comment down below and I will try my best to answer it for you. Uh, yeah, I guess I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye!